It is those everyday experiences that are the reason for most of what you are broadcasting. So if you can accept that what you're talking about, whether you're talking about being in tune with your inner being in the receptive mode, or whether you're talking about letting things come to you that you desire, in either case, the receptive mode is about not offering resistance that keeps you from being in the receptive mode. So the easiest way to explain what your point of attraction is. So let's just include in this point of attraction. In other words, I'm getting what I'm putting out. Let's just include in this point of attraction, not only the well-being that is coming to me, the financial well-being, the friendship, the ideas. What's coming to me is because of my point of attraction. And my point of attraction is because of what I'm broadcasting. So most of what you're broadcasting isn't about some world-changing event. It isn't about some astonishing new idea that you've just received. Most of your broadcasting is about being at the grocery store, being at the gas station. It's about being at work. It's interacting with your family and coworkers and friends and strangers and so forth. And so what causes most people to broadcast the way they do is their observation and reaction to what's going on around them. So if you could just take that into your thought process a little bit and make a decision for yourself that goes something like, I'm not going to be such a reactor to life. Instead, I'm going to be a deliberate broadcaster, which means you've got to get out ahead of it. Because if you just get up and stumble into the day, and right away just start reacting to what's going on in the household and then what's going on at traffic and then what's going on at work and then what's going on on television, then you have no control over what you're broadcasting and therefore you have no control over what your point of attraction is. But if when you put yourself in bed tonight, you say, while I sleep, momentum of thought will subside and when I awaken, I'm going to focus upon positive aspects and then you do that, then you get off on a new vibrational footing where your point of attraction is different and then if you begin responding to those improved conditions at least you're off on a better foot we would like you to reach the place where all together and we know it's a lot to ask but where all together you are just no longer primarily responding to conditions but you've got to get out ahead of that. That's why meditation helps you. When you quiet your mind for 15 or 20 minutes, that momentum subsides just like it did while you were sleeping through the night. And when you come back into your full conscious awareness, you are not now, law of attraction is not still calling to you the things that you were thinking about before you meditated, which means you could then begin thinking about something that is more favorable and you could begin a more positive point of attraction in that moment. So if you are aware that you want to have a positive point of attraction, then you are aware that you want to have a positive output or a good feeling output, then before long you can get out ahead of it. So instead of reacting to things, wanted or unwanted, you are broadcasting deliberately and then the reaction of the world has to be to your broadcast, to your deliberate broadcast. Prepaving is what we're talking about. The difference between deliberate creating and prepaving, that's a good term, and creating by default is when you're thinking on purpose and then getting results, that's deliberate creation. When you're observing and then getting results, that's creating by default. People who are living that conditional kind of creating, where they're observing, having an emotion, then getting that point of attraction, then getting more of it, then observing, causing their point of attraction, then having the manifestation of it, then observing it, then getting more of it. The thing about that is that you really have no control and it makes you then want to join the team or the group that needs to control conditions. Because when I observe this condition, I feel good. And if that condition would be more like this condition, meaning children or coworkers or employees or employers, if you would just be more like that, then I would feel better. But you can't get them to be more like that, so you don't feel better. And the more you are annoyed at them being like that, then the worse you feel. And the worse you feel, the more you need them to be like that. And so your world 
becomes, now hear this, this is a new conversation, and as this clicks into place for you, it's going to give you an understanding and therefore a new freedom that will really benefit you. So how do you create your own reality? How do thoughts turn to things? You, through life, have put a lot into your vibrational reality that has become a bigger and bigger and bolder and bolder and riper and readier reality for you to live. But you've got to be in the receiving mode of it. And so we've said to you some time ago, just get into the vortex. You've got to be a match to what's in your vortex in order for you to live in what you want to call manifested terms, what's in your vortex. And while many of you were able to accept that there is a vibrational reality, we began hearing from you things like, I accept that it exists, but so what? It existing and not being out here where I can play with it isn't very satisfying. And so we began giving you more understanding of how it's about you setting your receiver to the frequency of the transmitting vortex. You've got to have your frequencies line up, which means you have to be expectant of what's in there or you cannot experience it. And so then we began talking more and more about you being the reason that these vibrational thoughts are turning more and more to accessible, seeable, hearable, smellable, tasteable, touchable things. So as you begin to get the sense of how this process of becoming happens, then you are not only the receiver of more of the things that you want, but you get into, often, into this sweet spot of consciousness where you're feeling good and ideas are flowing and you're having rendezvous and good timing and fun and you feel sure-footed and you feel like you've got the world by the tail because you do and your life keeps turning out better and better and better and better for you because you're no longer blocking all of the things that are making their way into your experience. So we talk about the joy in the journey, but we don't just mean putting up with the endless journey on your way to a slow manifesting desire. We mean really enjoying how you keep asking and you keep allowing and with each thing you allow, then there's a new asking so that your desires continue to evolve because you never get it done and you can't get it wrong. And it just feels so good when you feel that clarity. And there's nothing that makes you feel more blessed or more worthy than to have had an idea and then to have tended to the idea until it is manifested. There's nothing that makes you feel more worthy or more blessed or more satisfied than to have looked into the world, made your choices about what you prefer, and then see that with the power of your own ability to focus, both your mind and your emotions, that you can be in the place where life just gets better for you. And then and only then do you begin living the way you intended to live when you came into this physical body to begin with. That's who you are. That's what you expected. That's what you planned. And until you're living that way, you're not ever going to be satisfied. It must be that way for you. Life helps you to know that you want something. At first, you're not a good vibrational match to it because it was the absence of it that made you even aware that you wanted it. But you minded your mind. You paid attention to the way you felt. You deliberately controlled your thinking a little bit. You cared about the way you feel. You felt better and better. You spent more time in meditation. You looked for more positive aspects. You thought more about the things that made you feel good and you thought less about the things that didn't make you feel good. You found your footing, you started feeling good, and then thoughts began occurring to you, and those thoughts began manifesting, and your timing got better and better, and you knew you were doing it. You knew that with just a little bit of effort, you've got this going on, and your life is reflecting the improvement in your vibration, and now you are the deliberate creator of your own experience. So then, this wonderful thing happens, because you become one of those who is creating deliberately and not so fixated on the outcome, just enjoying the process of the never-ending becoming. Because what you notice is, as soon as you get something that you've been wanting, you begin to want something else. So there's always going to be that somewhat of a gap between your giving birth to it and it gestating and you receiving it and it coming into full manifestation. You're not ever going to be standing in a position where you've got a whole pile of everything you want all around you. You're not ever going to get there. It is not the nature of eternal beings. There's always going to be something new that you've asked for that you're on the way to. 
There's always going to be something more that you've asked for that you're on the way to. There's always going to be something more that you've asked for that you're on the way to. And it's the on the way to that's life. It's on the way to it. It's on the way to it that is that sweet spot. It's on the way to it. It's on the way to it. It's the unfolding of it. That's why everyone who has ever existed, that's why all of us are all focused forward with all of you right here and now. This is the leading edge. This is where manifestation is occurring. This is the happening ground of creation. This is where it is. And we're all focused there with you. And when you stop leaving it to someone else and you stop pouting about what's not happening to you and you take your own bull by the horns and you acknowledge that you are the creator of your own experience and you let the energy that creates worlds flow through you, now you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on. Now you're living life the way you've intended. Now life is the way you meant for it to be. Now you got it going on. Now that's the way you mean to be. In the state of eternal becoming, conscious becoming. I saw it. I wanted it. I wasn't aligned with it. I felt better. I focused my mind. I felt ease about it. I allowed it. It happened. It happened. It happened. It happened. It happened. Things are always working out for me. This is the way you mean to feel. This is the way the larger part of you does feel. So. Hmm. But much of the world, instead of looking for that sweet spot and finding it and reveling in the creative process, most are looking at the results of what others have done. So they're sifting manifested stuff into piles and complaining that their pile's not bigger, that somebody else's pile is too big, completely missing the point of creation and offering their attention to it in the action form instead of into the mind thought form that is really where it's at. You following? So, so much action applied after the fact of sloppy creation, trying to compensate for sloppy creations through action and then failing. That's what most people are doing instead of getting out ahead of it and thinking the thought that will allow it to be. If you're looking at what is right now, First of all, we love you so much, you're looking at past tense. But if you are caring about the way you feel, now you're tending to what's actively going on. And now you get to be in on, oh, and it's what you want so much. It's what you came for so much. You get to be in on the turning of the thought to the thing. You get to be in on the turning of the thought to the thing. You've already chosen the way you want these things to turn out. And now you're in on witnessing the universal forces assisting you, agreeing with you, supporting you, mandating you, blessing you. So good to be physically focused. And it's so good to be non-physically focused. And it's so good to be witnessing this eternal, expanding, creative experience. We are all eternal beings. It's time for you to, instead of trying to prove your worthiness, just feel worthy. <laughs> instead of trying to explain what went wrong, just let it go right. Instead of worrying about the stuff that's not happening, focus on the stuff that is happening and the stuff that isn't happening will start to happen when you focus on the stuff that is happening. If we could just zap you all with a worthy stick, we would. But there isn't anything that will cause you to feel more worthy than to have wanted something you don't have and felt yourself give birth to the idea of it and then to doubt it. And then to recognize that you were doubting it and then do something about that doubt, either by ignoring it, changing the subject, or by speaking general enough about it until you began to soften your resistance about it. And then to feel the ease sweep over you and begin to feel yourself believing it. Do you know that there is as much movement in you moving from doubt to belief as there is from something turning from a thought to a thing? The big movement is in you moving from doubt to belief.